be our great uh, great meeting with uh, Mr. Agilas Berlopas, who is from Greek, you know, and uh, this is really a pleasure uh, for us to have this kind of guest in our chapter for the first time, and I think this is not the last time. <laughs> and uh, I would like to introduce him. Now, this is really very uh, outstanding personality. Uh, as um, uh, Mr. Uh, Dad Lopas is an ICF MCC coach and an um, accredited coach supervisor with three decades of business experience and dramatical 20,000 hours of coaching experience, you know, and clients in 100 countries and conference presenter in three continents. So, uh, <laughs> I think this list, um, um, I can go one listing, but I will give the word to Mr. Davropas, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. And since it's, uh, it's a short of a celebration, it's a celebration because it's International Coaching Week on the one hand, and on the other hand, you're celebrating one year of existence, if I'm right, as a chapter in Armenia. So I'm wishing for many more to come in the future and to do the great job that you're doing, promoting professional coaching in the country and, and beyond the country, from what I understand. So I see we have people from a lot of countries here, like India, Greece, USA, Italy, and the uh, so then that means that you are doing already great work. So Nana, can I welcome you into your home and uh, to prepare for our coaching session today? So what, before we dive into the coaching session itself, what do you think would be important for you to, to do or share to clear the air and vent? We're maybe just uh, just thank you uh, one more time for for being with us because I I'm here in two roles somehow um, as as the as the coachee and thank you for for accepting me as the coachee but also as someone who is organizing the whole thing and leading the team so as as someone who is leading the team let me. Thank you one more time for coming and and greet all the participants that are here. They were having um, a demo session and and I'm the coach. So that that I needed to kind of I couldn't um, take off my head totally. And thank you for asking me. And now just to breathe. Then, eh? and try to be fully present for the session. Okay, so let's try to do that to create that space where you can leave the other hat uh, aside and uh, focus on the conversation that we will have today. I assume that 30, 40 minutes might be enough. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Because, yeah, 30, 30, 40 minutes would be just, I think, a lot. That's, that's a, that's a yeah. opportunity to have a great session. And then we will have the Q&A session, the conversation afterwards. So getting slowly, getting into the conversation that we need to have, for which I have to thank you for getting into that space. Uh, I always think that uh, engaging in coaching uh, relationship and partnership requires a, a level of uh, humbleness. So I thank you for that and hope to reciprocate it uh, at some point in the future to change places with you. But for now, uh, would you like to share what would you like to accomplish today? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about the topic for, 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 for a few days already. And uh, probably the one that I came up with uh, 
uh, is uh, connected with my management style that I would like to explore. Um, and it's about my, um, my execution. I think I'm not a good executor and the, and my, uh, ability to manage execution of people. So if that sounds like a topic, then that's it. Okay. So I hear. Uh, your concern about what you say you you are not you think you are not a good executor and uh, what would you like to get out of this conversation today? Well, I'm thinking about understanding what stands. Um, on the way from one side, but also, so basically in the ideal world, I become, I become a good executor, um, or I understand, um, why I'm not good in that. Probably that's something good for me. So how I could become more effective, let's say. And when I say I, I don't mean only myself. I mean also my company and those who I lead. Becoming more effective, what does that mean for you, mm -hmm. Nada? I have so many um, ideas and projects and um, aspirations and uh, goals. Wow. I would say that I see a lot of opportunities and not all of them are being uh, fulfilled. So where do you, where would these opportunities lead you to become? Um, I mean, the word creator comes. Where is that? Um, someone who can organize and lead towards what I have seen is possible, meaning, um, um. I have a belief that if you can imagine something, you can achieve it. And that's for not only for me, but also for, um, you know, for, for, as I said, the company and the people I interact with. So when I see the opportunity to achieve something really good, Mm -hmm. And then it is not being achieved. Um, that's what makes me believe I'm not good in execution. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, how does it make you feel? Um, it makes me feel I lost something. I didn't do most. Um, Um, I might help more people or I might, 
um, arrange things so that something good was created, but I didn't, um, but I didn't manage. Okay, so I'm excited by the topic that you are bringing forward, and I'm hearing the words "imagine" and something good being created. So, can I invite you to share a little bit? What, how do you imagine yourself in creating something good? It's interesting because when, when you ask your question, um, I understand that probably I didn't imagine myself. I was just seeing the vision. Is it? Um, so if talking about what I see, it's probably only hands that much. So I, I was not seeing myself. So you don't see yourself inside the picture. Mm -mm. It's only the picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's going to be a huge work, inner work now. Just to kind of, if you if you ask me now, how about seeing you? Uh, I mean, probably I might. Uh, choose one of the pictures then because it's really difficult for me to start seeing me everywhere I haven't seen myself in. Yes, let's start with one and see what happens. Uh -huh. It's just so hard. I can wait, but I can also try to help if you. Yeah, that would be yes. Or, or if you, or if you can instruct me how to help you with that. I don't even know how to instruct, so if you have any idea, I'll be grateful. Okay, I'll try to use, I'll try to use my imagination and let me know if that works or if it doesn't, we'll do something else. So when you say that you imagine yourself something that will, is good as an executor in the company that you're working and with your people, with your teams and so on. You say that you see yourself or you imagine yourself in the uh, place uh, or in the role. I'm using a few words of my own and the role of creator. So let's see, let's try to imagine when you are being that creator, how do people experience you? It's interesting because when um, when I imagine myself there um, as an implementer, it's not about creator. I would say probably as a creator, it's easier because that's something that comes from inside. That's about probably creating the vision and the goals and everything. So when you ask me to uh, imagine myself, I do now see myself in the office and um, talking to people um, and asking them about what has been done. And I mean, very simple managerial things, um, which I never do. <laughs> In terms of, uh, if we talk about the function of control, 
Um, I leave that to people. I, I leave that uh, implementation part to people if they have a project. So here I see myself um, following up with them. Um, and I'm different from how I am usually. Well, this is another role. It's not the creator role, because the creator comes when um, I think about something new, a project, making it better, making it um, brighter. Well, but when it comes to implementation or managing the implementation, it's not the creator. It's completely other uh, professional. It's completely other me there. Yes, again. So I'd like to share something with you, which is something that I sense I cannot say that it's this is absolutely true because I cannot see your full body posture, but it seems like at some point you lean back and I'm thinking that perhaps you have a, a little, your posture is trying to close somehow. Am I correct? I see that your hands are very... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because this is something I don't enjoy doing. I kind of believe this is something I, I don't need to, to tell people. Uh, I don't need to remind people. I don't need to control people. Um, because I believe if they um, have the goal, if they have the project, that they are um, fully... Um, Capable, it's not about cap being capable. Um, for me, controlling is when I am a manager and I'm above somehow, I need to evaluate, I need to do, but, and then I don't love doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, that that comes to coaching. I love to be in partnership. Um, and when you are in partnership, you don't need to remind uh, or to control or to evaluate because if someone took the project, then they'll do their best. Uh, so probably that was the reason I kind of closed because I felt like, okay, I see myself doing that, but that's not something I love doing. Yes. And I think it was quite obvious, although we are meeting online, so we have this, you know, small frame, uh, but I think it was quite obvious that, that your, your body posture was telling its own story. That was in a, a could, one could say, comfortable position or at least if I uh, if you allow me I think it was uh, something that you as you said as you said right now something that you really don't want to do now you have changed you seem to be more comfortable you're linked a little um, in front so that means you are more like your body is saying some story I'm more engaged when I lean mm -hmm. forward right so that brings the conversation, or perhaps we need to have the conversation of, is this the right choice for you, or is it something else that you would rather be engaged with? And you said that you would rather have a, a coaching uh, type of relation, which is being in partnership. Okay. You mean, is it the, uh, the right thing for me to, to manage team? Was that about that? 
I would say, is it the way, the method that you're trying to achieve that, the right oh. way for you? Um, I would say that I have very many success stories of working with my colleagues in partnership and then taking the responsibility and having the passion to perform. But there are cases with... Um, less professional or juniors or with youngers. I mean, there are cases when it is needed. So I cannot find the, um, yeah, yeah, you're completely right. It's about method. Probably there is another method to deal with those guys who are requesting, who, who are kind of, who needs that. Um, uh, probably that's not a control, but that's support. And then somehow uh, deciding deciding about who I continue working with and who I don't continue working with quicker. So from There's one, no sharp and the one over. So from one side, um, one insight is that it's not about control, it's about uh, support. And maybe I might do that if if I if I put it that way, then I might want to do it more. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, because I love developing people. I love. Uh, I have been doing that, and and that's something that comes naturally. Uh, and the second thing, see, second insight that I had um, uh, when I asked about the method, making the decisions about who I continue working with and who I don't faster. Because I give another chance and I give another chance and I give another chance, but probably I need to uh, limit the time let's call it probation <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to to kind of uh, make a decision if this is someone who will get along with my uh, leadership management style or not or i i will need to manage step by step that person for for the for the rest of, of their uh, work life with me. So I hear that you know what to do and you have ideas. I assume that if I keep asking you what else can you do, what could you do differently, you would have ideas. Because, well, I take it for granted that you like to work with people and develop people, as you said earlier, because you are a coach. So, of course, this is one of the things that you love to do, mm -hmm. right? And you are good at, at it, as far as I know. And so that means that uh, this is something you do. But if, if you allow me, in the beginning of our conversation, you uh, did, um, you, you made a comment and you were judging yourself. You said, I'm not good at that work as an executor. Mm -hmm. From where we are now, how does that sound to you? Um, now that 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 sounds, I have my um 
way of executing projects um, that involve number of people and that way is Um, through giving them um, freedom and empowering them uh, uh, to get to the uh, stage and the level when we are partners. And um, what is definitely missing, or maybe added, uh, that let's call it developing part. Mm -hmm. Because if they are not there, then they need to come to to there quicker. So I mean, or or or. or or, or in the pace they are uh, able to come there, but but that bridge, the journey, yeah, might be uh, uh, a challenge for them because they don't know, they 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 n might not know exactly what to do how to do and 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 where we are going and what's the vision so there they need support and probably um uh, that's where i need to look for ways and methods how to support them to get to get to, to that partnership stage faster Well, yeah, so what needs to change to help them get in that partnership stage fastly? What would it take? That's, uh, that's what's, uh, that's what's the, uh, Delta, let's say, that's what's, uh, what I need to focus on uh, to find ways that would uh, be uh, that I would love to do <laughs> because um, I mean I ended up with understanding that I kind of I'm in a stage in my life that I do only things that I love to do and I work with people who I love to work with, and I'm happy that I have uh, come up to that stage uh, in my career and in my life. So I need to find methods and ways to help them to go through that journey and that method of helping should be something that I enjoy doing. In contrast with it? In contrast with controlling. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. Where's this, where's that? Because deep in my heart, I understand that that's not helping. That control is not helping. Uh, it's like you cannot control each step. It's impossible. You need to empower. And that is what I have been doing. But yes, people are not there yet. So for those who are not there yet, uh, what's my role? Uh, to be there, present, for them to get there. It can be faster or more effective, or I mean, to get there eventually. <laughs> it, can, it can be not faster, but at least to get there. Mm. To show the way. Are we? Yeah. yeah, go on. Are we getting there? Is it is our conversation helping you get where you where do you want to get? 
For sure, because now I under, I mean, I got, uh, I see the road somehow. I see a fundamental something really. Um, I I have a feeling that here there's a gap that I need to find and fill in. And if I do that, if I find it, then it's going to work. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. And I can feel. And I can feel your energy is changing yes. as well as we, yes, as you speak. That's wonderful. So I'm thinking, if you go back and in, 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 to to that phase when we were talking, how do you imagine yourself in the future being a creator? Yeah, then it's, uh, I mean, in the first picture, uh, when you asked me to imagine myself doing that successfully, I was sitting behind the table and there was someone uh, on the other side of the table and there was that kind of picture. And now it's kind of a more training style. It's, it's the, the, the no, there are more people, first of all, in that picture. Uh, there are no tables. It's it's kind of a round, and it's a discussion. There's no levels. It's a partnership thing. But yes, mm -hmm. I am somehow uh, leading the the thing. I'm, I'm I know what I do. Uh, I know why I do what I do. Uh, and I know people there need that what I do. And there is an action with all of us. It sounds like you have full awareness of where you are and uh, personally and systemically. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> so what else would you like to include in our conversation to make you feel full about the goal that you initially wanted to reach? Do we have time? We, we do. I have time mm -hmm. and we have booked a lot of time. So depending on you. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could also, if we could have have a closer look into what is that I do there. I mean, that gap. I do understand that I somehow help. Uh, I accompany, but the method itself, if if we could have a, a deep, a, a closer look on uh, me doing that, uh, to see what are the methods or what else mm. would be a method yeah. that would be helpful. Yes. So if we're talking about the transition, let's call it like that if you would like. So what would be the steps to make that transition for you, for the people in your team or, or the company in general? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm now thinking that probably that's um, work with seniors because uh, I have a feeling I will not be able to do that with everybody. Um, so 
choosing a very limited number of those who are capable then to um, continue uh, and manage uh, others might be a, a, a solution. Because in consulting, it's difficult. I mean, it's it's not a big uh, number of people and you're all connected. Um, but still, I think that the consistency matters, especially for juniors. And because I'm not able to um, to uh, make sure uh, that I will be consistent with them. It's better not to start with uh, with those who need uh, an everyday uh, support and and uh, and development. So probably um, start working with seniors, but be very very organized. Uh, in terms of what, how, when, and how we move forward in partnership and also uh, agreeing around how it is going to then uh, flow and uh, impact those who are not there who are not working directly with me. So I understand you want to have different um, mm -hmm. interventions or relation with uh, different levels of people in, in the workplace, depending on their seniority. Am I right? Yes. Okay, so does it mean that what we have talked about uh, is uh, would be ideal for the senior people? Mm -hmm. And we need to become more specific regarding the rest of the people, or is it the other way around for you? Uh, in terms of developing from time to time, occasionally, and doing inspirational, important uh, things that only me is able to do, I will definitely do that for all. But in terms of a more consistent uh, methods, uh, that what I have um, come up to is to be online only with seniors and clearly uh, with clear um, agreements and the vision of, of, of functions um, around to who, who, who is developing who and who is taking care of who and and uh, at which stage, but in terms of general leadership and inspirational part, I mean that creator part, um, I, I, I can be, I can definitely be there for everybody, but because those very juniors need some kind of consistency, uh, and it needs to be there. And some, some, uh, sometimes I'm not in the country. Sometimes I'm traveling. Sometimes I'm fully engaged in other projects that are a priority. I will not be able to do that anyway. So um, the insight is um, decide on what I am not doing anymore, uh, and talk to my people and come up to conclusions and decisions. Uh, around who is covering what. Okay, when you say people, do you mean your senior people or older people? 
I mean, senior people, in, first of all, because we need to agree with senior people, and then from there, uh -huh. it will start to flow. So what could be their role in this, in this transition phase? Partner. <laughs> I mean, their role is definitely a partner role. And, uh, and when I say partner, I mean, in very different senses, um, starting from, uh, ideas and agreeing and not agreeing and talking about the challenges and finishing with implementation and also in involving me on the stages they need me there. Mm -hmm. So now when I was describing that picture, um, uh, with, uh, with, with people around me and me doing something. So there it's. It's a limited number of people. It's not everybody. It's not everybody. And it relates to a uh, few different areas of my, where I am involved, be that uh, social, be that uh, company, somehow that's, uh, that's a method that I found which might sound an obvious one, but somehow I came to that and I deeply believe it's going to help. Mm, it's going to help. And when I hear people that are partners, I imagine automatically that they lift some weight from your shoulders or you share uh, the weight so in the context of our discussion today, what what part of the weight would you like to would you like them to help you with? No, this is question. I kind of failed build the weight. Yes, I think that that's. That's taking a lot of weight from my shoulders for sure. Um, and it's about not only taking out the weight, but also about acknowledging the strength of those people who I am passing that weight to. Uh, which must be something um, important that feels like something important, not only for me. I think that must be something important for them as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to lift some weight off your shoulders. It's good to do that, to allow you to be more creative, be in that position, and be creative by being cool and how you like to be. I mean, uh, 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 one insight came um it's about giving one of the things that i will do from today mm -hmm. i will give that our function of making the decision about her to employ and not to and who not to employ to those senior. I think that's lifting a lot of weight from my shoulders 
and that's definitely going to help because they are then in the end of the day those who are who will be working with those people so why do i make the decision then Sounds like a new strategy. Yeah. How does it feel? Amazing. Well, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's strong it's, state. I have been, uh, I have been employing people. I have been making a decision, and then they have been working with those people, which is not fair at all, uh, because there was such a heavy thing on my shoulders because I have made a decision and now I need to um, somehow, yeah, I need to explain why and then they are not happy or they are happy. Let them do that and let them take the responsibility of making that decision and then maybe they can, they are able to, yeah, to make better decisions in terms of web stuffing. Okay, so I see a big smile. <laughs> That's nice. So, when would you like to review uh, your progress in this transition? Uh, I didn't get the, the 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 question. When would I like to? Review, revisit. Oh, review. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Let's see oh, where I am. In a month. In a month from now. Yeah, month or two maybe. I mean, in a month we can come back to that uh, topic, and then in three months it's uh, it's a timing when we can see the impact of that decision. Mm -hmm. Because I heard a lot of ideas uh, this evening, a lot of ideas regarding who, uh, not who you like to be, but how you like to be, and uh, what would you like to exp how would you like to experience uh, your role, and uh, that that you came to the conclusion that 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 implies a change in how you are how organize your people into more senior where you are more of a partner and the people who are more low level so you have to be more um consistent as you said uh so and then uh some of the senior people will lift some uh weight from your shoulders that me in organizing that in managing these people as well so that would imply a change in some of them, some parts of the rules, and, and then also as well, he said uh, he will make new decisions on who to employ and who not to employ. I guess in order to fit into that new way of organizing the uh, way things are being run, and, uh, what are the people's rules, and who is ideal for this kind of rules. So this sounds like a more intentional future. Mm -hmm. Is this where would is this where you would like to get uh, in our conversation this evening? Yes. Is there something else that you would like to add? I have my first uh, kind of um, while you were speaking, it came. My first step is going to be guys. I mean, I'm coming and I'm telling guys, and and I mean, some of them might be here, by the way, guys. You look like. Yes, we are a consulting company. We're not big, but I'm not micromanaging anymore. I'm there to help. I'm there to develop. I'm there to support whenever you need me, but I am not micromanaging anymore. It's interesting that I came to a, to a step what I am not doing anymore. <laughs> It's a strong de it's a declaration. I think it it's important to the, you found your voice and you're voicing uh, what you need to change and what needs to be done from now on. So 
I want to congratulate you in being courageous at this point. <laughs> what? Thank you so much. Yeah, because that, that voice that came out from me, I am not micromanaging anymore, took so much out of my shoulders. I mean, yeah. huge energy. Yes, youth energy. Huge energy, and uh, I hope the others will share that energy with you. Are we uh, good to close this round and uh, move on to the uh, discussion yes. that has been planned? So thank you very much for mm -hmm. this, Nana. And uh, someone will take the lead right now, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Guyane John, will you come back and probably, uh, guys, if you have questions, please, you can write them in the chat so that Guyane can read them for Angelos. Oh, well. Let me see. Yeah, now Angela put it right. Thank you, Nana. I would like to see uh, Angela's notes, if possible. I'm curious whether he used abbreviations or other ways to take notes. Yeah. Um, okay, I can answer. I can show you. I don't take notes in the form of minutes, like what has been said in the... In, this is not my intention to include everything. And, and uh, so I don't use abbreviations usually. Sometimes I draw, but uh, you will not see draw, uh, drawing here. However, this gives me the opportunity to... Uh, you can see that, can you? Yeah. Okay, so this is... So this is uh, what's called... Uh, e ink, it gives you the, the shielding of the uh, kinesthetic gloves, the, the move of the paper in the move of the pen in the paper, which is, is creating uh, connections. It's in, in it, and they say that it makes you, it helps you be creative when you have these senses. That's it. Okay, Angela. <laughs> okay, many appreciations. And um, uh, here it, it says, uh, will there be any recording? Would the recording be posted anywhere? Yes, it will be posted in uh, ICF or Nina Chapter YouTube channel. You can follow it. The, it will hopefully be in the next two days. Um, next, Pam's loved it. Amazing session. Thank you to both of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, any appreciation. Um, any more questions? If there are no questions, I would definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, questions. There is. Uh, this is an amazing uh, opportunity to to ask questions to the master of the master. Can you please uh, please add a link to the channel? Okay, this is more technical question. Thank you both. Fantastic. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. Fantastic dialogue. A bold uh, question for Nana. With due respect and no intent of offending, may I ask, are you afraid of letting people go? No, I, I don't. I, I, I let that. That's uh, probably I let, uh, I too much let people go. Okay. Uh, the next question from Anush. Uh, when you asked about emotions, she didn't reply with emotion, but rather state of being. Can you comment on that? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the, this is an interesting note and the question. So when I'm, my intention when I'm asking about emotions is to find a way to create awareness. So I was not really... Uh, wanting to hear about emotions, but I would, was trying to create the awareness. So 
when my client Nana, in this case, uh, chose to bring that forward, that was important for her. And I think all of these things are linked. Our state of being, our emotions, the way they are expressed through our body. Remember some conference, we had some interventions regarding body posture. And what does that mean? Uh, all these things might be linked with uh, assumptions and um, beliefs or whatever. So it's like fighting it. For me, each time it's like um, holding a thread and where will that, will that lead to some new elements that will come uh, up into the surface and perhaps help us uh, get more aware of what is happening. Hope that is helpful. With your microphone was on Nana, not my mother, it's your name is... Guyana, <laughs> sorry. So the yeah. question is, uh, do you usually ask four questions at the beginning of sessions? So you noticed that I asked that four question probably. Uh, yeah, because she said it's not, it's not that I have to do that. Usually you don't have to do anything. The only thing that you have to do is make this sound a natural, easy flow and free flow in conversation. But it was important. I think it was important at that point. She was trying to do something and she was experiencing some kind of blockages. So the reason why you're doing that or who do you want to become can bring uh, forward insights like the one that they did or provoke a start of a conversation so how do i envision myself how do i imagine myself in the future remember how that conversation unraveled um can i imagine myself and how do i imagine myself is it difficult for me to imagine myself i think that started conversation there which was very useful when she couldn't imagine herself as a creator i hope she had been stopped so that made is that um you would change the topic or you would ask a very different uh, question and Edna, I did them. Is that the question or something else? Would you like to ask something else? No, you would like to ask something else, which is. I have a question, actually. Um, may I? Yes. Um, in the beginning, it was uh, said that uh, we have 30, 35 minutes for the session, but it took much longer. Um, um, is that okay, uh, until the client feels that, well, we are close to the end and after that you finished? Well, uh, depending on the context, if it's, uh, if it's a, uh, a paid client and you have a very tight schedule, both you and the client or either one. Uh, then you have to be absolutely respectful of the time. In, uh, in reality, we have booked for 90 minutes. So I was more or less trying to see, to put a frame and see how would Nana feel, what would, might be enough. Uh, my intention was not to be very strict into that because I knew we had booked 90 minutes, including uh, our Q&A session, of course, right? There is another I think, but I think it's important uh, to have this idea up front from with the client because we are partnering in making and making sure that this session will be successful and we don't want to surprise ourselves by holding different uh, impressions of what would be the time 
uh, limits or something like that. So this is why I made the conversation. Thank you for that. Apostola has a question to Nana. What were your thoughts and feelings as a coachee when I uh, just mentioned the changes to your body posture and your arms? Uh, did you have any insights or realizations at that moment? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Apostolos, uh, for the question. I think that was a very strong moment because I myself saw that, um, I mean, my posture was, I kind of leaned back, uh, and, um, when Angelos told me you kind of come from there, I realized that yes, my hands went this way. So that was a very, very strong moment. One of the transformational moments because, uh, that observation that he shared, I haven't noticed myself. I thought opposite. I leaned back and that was, uh, that was it. But from there, the session went towards completely another direction. Um, just be, be just, just because of that observation. So my feelings were all. Oh, there's an insight. I found something. Uh, I found a jewel. I am. I answered. Great. Right, thank you very much. Lap your contact checking in or with our post issue throughout the session and close it to the end of session. Would it be helpful to anchor it with the emotion and ask what these changes will change in broader sense in your life? I mean, a bigger why. It could be, um, but uh, the topic that we were discussing was not about bigger changes in life, it was about uh, becoming uh, more effective in uh, her work. It is linked with who we are, of course, all the time. Everything is linked, but it was not, we, we were not, that was not a request about uh, the, the change in life. So that would be a different session. It could be, it might be interesting, but the client should re uh, request that, right? Otherwise it will be just, you know, my curiosity. It would be a session for me, not for her. <laughs> Okay. Uh, also, I would like, uh, I would have tempted to ask Nana what control means for her. I will, uh, it would be very curious. I would be very curious. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. It's interesting to see that, uh, what clients are sharing might trigger our own curiosity. And it's very important to make an evaluation. So if I go in that direction, would that serve the client? Would that serve the conversation? Would that serve me? Uh, and there is always so much information out there. It's great to be curious, but you need to steer this wheel and into the arbor the client wants to go. Thank you. And Nikolai wants to ask a question. Nikolai, please. Okay, thank you. I have a question to Angelos uh, about your uh, summaries and returning to Ndana, what you observed. Sometimes it was quite short, sometimes it was longer. I, I want just mm. your comment about that. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, uh, how much you need to give it, the, this reflection, the summary? Should it be short or long? Should you take a pause there or not? Yes, want to your opinion, your experience about this question. Yes, thank you very much, Nikolai. I think that uh, in this session, uh, Nana was uh, uh, many times in reflector mode, which is good because this is what we want the client to reflect on her issues and. Uh, and she was uh, sharing uh, 
very interesting insights. And there were times when I need to make big silences. And so that means I would have to diminish uh, the time that I would be speaking. Sometimes I was acting like I was summarizing, but I was just repeating and paraphrasing what she was saying to continue to this connection with her that I am with her. So I was trying to do that with my uh, nonverbal uh, information, how I was looking at her, my facial expressions, how I was leaning forward, and sometimes words, because, you know, sometimes you had, if, if you have been very silent for a long time, sometimes you had to do, to give a few words. Now, this, some, some, the summary is actually that I used were uh, as short as possible, with the exception, as you said, uh, very correctly in the end. I think that in the end, we need to make sure that we have to, you know, um, revisit the points that we have ticked. So we said that this, and then we managed to do that, and we came to that conclusion, and uh, to have the full picture. And um, see if there's something else that we are missing in the conversation. See if there's something else that the client would like to take out of the session. Like at some point earlier, uh, Nana said, yes, I would like to go into more details, take go more closer. So it, it appeared that this was helpful for the process and the client. Uh, um, to be completely honest, uh, the last summary was big. I was feeling enthusiastic because we have achieved so much. And I felt like we needed to celebrate that and say all of the things that we have achieved. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and thank you, Angelos. And I'll, I'll take over. Uh, we need to, to let Angelos go. I know he, he has been having so many sessions. Uh, mm -hmm. And l let's finish with this celebration. Um, and thank you for this amazing session from, uh, from me as a client and from me as the president of ICF Armenia. Um, this was a huge contribution and thank you very much all for joining us. Um, we are, we have been growing for one year already and we promise we are going to grow, um, in terms of numbers and quality and deepness. So keep your eyes on our chapter, those who are not with us and my next goal, and I'm talking as a creator now, <laughs> is to hold uh, a conference here in Armenia. And I don't know when it is going to happen. We're planning it next year. But I very much hope that you, Angelos, will join us then. So you can, you. We can consider this as a formal invitation. And let's see how we implement that. Thank you very much for having me and thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, um, and I would love to visit Yerva and uh, hope that you will win the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> 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 okay, and then we, okay, and then we, we will manage to make it to while yeah, so yeah, probably that's not that 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 our conversation was for something, and and yeah, my trip to Greece was also for something that will be a vision ICF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's great. Thank you very much. I want to thank you and the chapter and Georgi, of course, for making the initial invitation. Thank you very much, and I wish you continued success and celebration. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Georgi, for, for, for helping us to invite, to, to in, for introducing uh, us to, 
to each other. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.